This is a weekend wire SLC 3905 fifth wheel trader that we're doing the so called sagging wall repair. And what we've done is we've jacked it up at all four corners, removed the tires. And you can see here it's jacked up in the front. And what we've noticed is, is we've took dimensions from underneath the trailer before we jacked it up. And this is from the frame rails. And before when you went inside the trailer, you could bounce or just even walk on the floor and it would, it would kind of be springy. The floor would be springy. <clears throat> so after we jacked it up and put on the stands, we removed all the outside fender skirts. But if you can look right up in here, you're going to see a gap. I don't know if you can see that or not. There's a gap with that outrigger on that wall. And then right here is our rear mud flap. It is also an outrigger. And you can see this gap as well. You can see my hand here, my finger. Coming across here, this is that gap all right through there. So what's taking place here is the walls are not coming down. The frame is bowing up in the middle. So the suspension is driving the frame rails up and the like so it's like an inverted banana. So the frame rails are driving up and the tail and the front end of the trailers are going down, <clears throat> causing a bow. And when you jack this up and let it sag down, all your suspension comes down where it needs to be. And so the fix that everybody does is, is they come across the bottom underneath here, some two by two by two, you can see my hand, and shoot it across from these shackles right here, side to side. The back here, back one, they dump, dump around. <clears throat> but what we're gonna, which does repair this problem, but it's not the actual fix. So what we're gonna do here is, is we're gonna put two inch by two inch square tube to the bottom of the chassis from front to rear, 3 16 and then a piece of 3 16 two inch angle iron in the area where the factory two inch square tubing is installed. So that's eighth inch. And then from there, we'll put our members across the side underneath, and then we'll come up in the center of the wheels without riggers. And those, those outriggers are what you need for the support for the walls, but it's actually supporting the frame. Like I said, the walls aren't going down. And if you look underneath this thing before you pull this apart, <coughs> now well, you can see that, but there's no movement on those. Those cross members, there are no movements. There's no place where you could see any type of bend in them. And if there was some type of movement, like everybody's talking about the frame rolling, these would have, it would show it. And when you jack it up and let it all come down, this thing will make all kinds of noise. And the floor is solid now. Uh, one of the cupboards fits better. The back door closes better. But it's from its bowing front to rear. We measured the frame rails before we jacked it up from this point right here. If you can see my finger from that point right there. We measured these from side to side and the tops. And we had less than a sixteenth of movement of them spreading out or in like everybody talks they do. Also, if these were rolling like everybody's saying they're doing, we would see movement in other places. We'd see other pieces of, of suspension that is worn out. And nothing else is worn out on this. So it is just this is C channel. If anybody knows this stuff, it's like a wet noodle. Um, if you pick it up and tw it'll twist and bend and do all kinds of things. It's not very supportive. And you can see the two inch on the that pallet right there. That's the two inch square we'll be putting it down the both sides. So we'll be essentially making it an eight inch frame and giving it some rigidity and then adding cross members to this thing so it doesn't move it anymore in the future. So when you're getting ready to weld on your two inch square three sixteenths tubing, you need to check. As you can see my fingers pointing right there, little welding boogers. They'll uh one there and this one here and I'll walk up here kind of fast for you guys and 
You can see up here, see all these welding boogers right here? Yeah, they grind all those off. So we'll get all those removed and then uh, look down the frame, make sure there's not one anywhere else. And then we'll get ready to put this two inch tube up there. Here we are installing two inch by two inch square tube. We ground the corner back so it'll pull it up closer to the existing frame that's on the welded on where the axles go. So this will be going here, there's a little bit of a dip here. We're eventually gonna run angle iron over this factory one and it's gonna seam over this one here we're installing and go underneath to give us support. But this will get all welded up in place here and then we'll stitch weld it down through here on both sides. And you can see the difference of how much taller this looks with this two inch tube on here. Which uh, we've been clamping in place, you can see the clamps. And uh, we're finishing aligning it right now. The factory frame bows out in the front, or bows in on the front, so we'll make some adjustments for this to, to go on here. But we'll need to do some fitting, fit it up a couple times and get it all fitted up in there nice and clamped in place and then get it tapped. Here's the outrigger on the driver's side rear. It's the mud flap outrigger and you can see it's cracked down along the frame right there and then after we remove the bolt you can see the separation that is in this now with my hand and my finger. Come around here and you can see the crack on the other side. And then the other rigger right behind it. You can see the separation that it has now too. The finger here. You can see it very well. Weekend Warrior Frame Repair. Here's a section that we're showing you of the frame, how it actually moves up and down. We jacked it up. You can see we're just jacking the frame down right now, letting the frame jack down, letting the frame go down. And then we'll jack it back up. You can see that outrigger, the gap it has there. Now we're gonna jack back up here on the frame. And you watch it coming up. See it's coming up. Still coming up. And one more. There we go. Back into place. The frame's bowing, not rolling. Okay, come back up. You let it down. It's hard to tell in the video. Here's the after the two by two has been installed, and you can see the little bit of a gap. It's nothing like how it was. It just barely moves compared to the way it was before. For sure. Before we had a before we had a inch inch and a quarter gap and now we're gonna let it down it comes down probably about a maybe not quite half an inch maybe like, not even that it like, looks like less than a quarter inch I didn't take a video to show you this before we added this doubler here on the bottom this is the corner of the last one you've seen where the outriggers were moving but if you look up in here this, this riggers down actually I remeasured it it's it's about three sixteenths of an inch of downwards right now but if you look up in here where my finger is there's a little bit of a gap between the floor and the frame and before we put this doubler in I could put my finger in all the way up past my knuckle inside here there's not too much clearance as much the frame as it came down so now with this in here, it's barely there, and what we'll do now is before we 
weld the crossbars in, we will put preload on the chassis upwards. On both sides, we're going to put the bar shooting across. And what we're going to do here is do one behind this tank, shoot it across. And then instead of going here and underneath, I believe what we're thinking about doing is, is going right in front of the tank, shooting one across. And that will that will give this whole member here support. And hopefully it'll keep them set coming down. And then when we do all this, it'll all be preloaded up into the riggers up into the wall and the frame up into the floor. There's something else I wanted to show you. After we put the doubler on this uh, side here, the passenger side where the entrance door is, I think you're all familiar with your step here. Uh, the step is springy just like your floor is. You've just gotten used to it. But in this one here now, after we've added this doubler, the step is solid. No movement, solid. So the frame besides it, besides it, bowing, it does flex. I mean, I agree, it does flex because it is a C-channel. But adding this doubler in here and welding in this rigger all the way to the bottom and welding the bottom of your steps to the bottom of that makes a big difference on your step. This is the 3 16th angle iron. It gets notched to go around the shackles. And we're going to install this on the back side of the existing 2 inch. It's on the chassis now. And you can see up there in the front how the 2 inch that we added is connecting to the existing 2 inch. Let's walk up, let me see it. You can see that there. And then this will go on the back side of this here. So it'll be up around here. And you can see our new two inch weld on the back side of this one and the mud flaps welded to that. And uh, after we install this, then we'll put our cross braces going between both the uh, sides of the frame all the way up from the front to the back. And then our outriggers will go up above the shackles for support for the sidewall. Here we are fitting the two inch three sixteenths quarter, uh, two and three sixteenths, two by two three sixteenths angle iron out of the trailer. You can see we have plenty of clamps to support it both ways. We want it tight up against the frame. So we're still gonna make some adjustments to it. Just wanna let you see how it fits in here. On the outside here, you can see all the clamps both ways. So that way it's tight up against the, the chassis. Here's what this looks like when you have all your clamps installed, checking for fitment. Here's under the trailer with the angle iron installed. This is the final install before we weld it up. I'm going to show you if you can see these little holes I drilled in the like I said, I used my plasma cutter and just burned holes through them. And uh, you want to make sure that this is flush to the frame in here, if you can see my finger. Once it's nice and tight, and then we're going to fill this with weld when we're done. This will give us a lot of support and strength right here. And it's all the way down. You want to check all of them. To make sure this is this here is flush up against this frame here. We don't want anything moving all the way down. You have them all the way down below the frame. And then what we'll do then is also is box in all around the shackles and make, make sure it's all strong. And then we'll come back here and add our 2x2 two two, shooting across to the other side. So I installed the angle iron on the inside, on this side with the frame rail was sagging down. And after we did this, you can see that the rigger or the mud flap is actually touching the wall now. And you can even see this belt back at rigger here. It's touching the wall now too. And before we had that gap up inside here, that is gone. Maybe just a tiny bit, a sixteenth or an eighth of an inch or so at the most. So just adding this on the inside this 3 16 angle iron we clamped it all together finished pulling this frame back up where it needed to go alrighty here's our outriggers we've installed what we've done is um, 
used one by one by eighth inch, weld them together, it was the stock we had here at the shop. And then we put a little brace out here on the side of it to hold it up. And this side here, um, we ended up, haven't put the brace on the side of this yet. We're finished welding, just kind of got it tacked in place. But you can see a little bit of a gap, and what we did is on this side is, is we put a jack right underneath here and preloaded this side of the frame until we just had a little bit of movement in the chassis to where it just touched the floor and which wasn't very much and then we welded these in place and then uh, we left the jack down now on the other side we did not do that the other side um, we felt that it just the frame was at the right location so we had to put the outriggers uh, where they were where the frame lies so for preload on the side that we used the jack to preload it for the outrigger you're wondering how we kind of checked everything was we put a level on the inside used it as a straight edge and checked here because this is where your gap will be it'll be along this side downwards because the frame is dropped down right now and so we just brought it up just so it just just came up a little bit to where it looked like it was good preload stopped there and put our riggers on Five bars added from the front perch here. Back, we installed five crossbars all the way across through here. And then we added one up in the front, and that would be in between the two tanks. Actually, correction, we added six in the rear and one in the front, so seven total. One rigger was missing, we added an extra one here. Uh, just angle iron, and then uh, all the existing outriggers, we re-welded all of them. Here we are starting from the back. This is the, the rear crossbar we installed, backed by your stabilizing jacks, spare tire. Our next bar goes through next to the tire and welded also to that cross member that holds on the tire rack your storage tank for your pump station. Our next bar. And we have our next bar after that it goes to the shackle. Next bar after that goes to the shackle. And the next bar about above that goes to the front shackle. So right here we have one, two, three, four, five bars. Installed for the rear. Six. I'm sorry. One, two, three, four, five. Six bars in the rear. I'm sorry. Six in the rear. I didn't count the rear one. And then we installed our riggers here and here. And then, <coughs> excuse me, we installed one more bar right up here in between the two tanks, your gray and black water tanks. And then we installed one more rigger here on the trailer that was missing from originally. When we pulled it out of the driveway, <clears throat> it was extremely quiet now. It did not creak in or make any funny noises. Uh, you'll need to remove all your plumbing from underneath the trailer when you do this so you can get in there and weld everywhere. And you'll need to remove both of your tanks, your your generator tank and your if you have a, a pump station, you'll remove both those tanks and your spare tire to make accommodations for welding. Here's the well after we installed it, after making the repairs. As you can see in this video, that it's tight all the way down, nice and tight. And what we're gonna do is we removed, go ahead pan all the way down for you. We removed the original wall board was on here and we installed light back inside here because they don't make that color anymore for warriors. Let's put this back in here. 
get it all nice and stapled in there and let it beat a cock and uh, it'll look really nice when it's all finished.